Vital signs. Position the patient properly. Confirm that the patient has not consumed food, alcohol, tobacco, or caffeine, or exercised in the last 30 minutes. To assess the pulse, properly palpate the radial artery located on the flexor surface of the wrist laterally. Count the pulsations for 15 seconds and multiply that number by 4 to find beats per minute. Count the pulse for a full minute if abnormalities are detected. Do not inform the patient when you begin to assess respirations. Count the breaths for 30 seconds and multiply that number by 2. Again, if abnormalities are detected, count for a full minute. To assess blood pressure, you must first select the proper cuff size. Sizes range from infant, child, adult, to large adult or thigh cuffs. An appropriately sized cuff will fall within the range demarcations when wrapped around the patient's arm. Cuffs that are too small may give falsely high readings. Place the cuff just above the elbow. Most cuffs have a marking that should be placed over the brachial artery, located towards the medial surface of the cubital fossa. Palpate the brachial artery prior to assessing blood pressure. Support the patient's arm at heart level. While palpating the radial artery, inflate the cuff until the pulse disappears. Deflate the cuff slowly to confirm the pressure at which the pulse disappears. This point is your estimated systolic pressure. Select the proper cuff size and correctly place the cuff on the patient's arm. Using the diaphragm of your stethoscope, place it over the brachial artery. Support the arm at heart level. Inflate the cuff 30 millimeters of mercury over the estimated systolic pressure. This avoids an unrecognized oscillatory gap that may lead to serious underestimation of systolic pressure. Deflate the cuff slowly, less than 5 millimeters per second until you first hear pulses or Korotkoff sounds. This is the patient's systolic pressure. Keep deflating the cuff until you no longer hear these sounds. This is the patient's diastolic pressure. In addition to the wall mount, students should feel comfortable using both aneroid and digital sphygmomanometers. The key difference in the aneroid and the wall mount cuff is the display gauge. Most come with a clip that can be directly attached to the cuff, or you may ask the patient to hold the display gauge for you. While there are many types of digital devices, none require the use of a stethoscope, but you may or may not need to make